What's up guys, it's Margaret. Today I'm here to give you a super special surprise. I know that many of you guys in the comments are referencing Riverdale and want to see Riverdale themed spreads. So here they are. In honor of Riverdale finally coming back for a third season, I'm giving you a whole video dedicated to Riverdale themed spreads. We all know that the town with Pep is full of mysteries, but I'm not hiding anything here. You're gonna get Southside Serpents, Pop's Diner, and habit trackers you will die for. They'll also keep you in check when you've been way too busy binge watching Riverdale. So before we begin binge watching that third season, make sure you subscribe to Seventeen's YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any future bullet journaling tips and tricks. There's no way I was gonna miss out on the opportunity to use Riverdale's iconic font in this month's theme. So I decided to use it for the opening spread. I kept the spread pretty minimal, but that's only because the rest of the spreads are really heavy on the doodling. So the first thing I did was write Riverdale in large letters using the font from the Riverdale opening card. Instead of using my usual black micron, I decided to use a royal blue micron, and then I highlighted the inside of the letters with a light blue brush pen. I almost always only use black micron pens because I love how clean and sophisticated they make a spread look, but they just wouldn't have felt right here because Riverdale's opening font is that iconic blue and you wouldn't have recognized it in black. Now it's time to sketch out Archie and Betty in the open space towards the left of the title. Don't worry if you're not the best drawer. It took me so many years of practice to get where I'm at today. If you don't feel comfortable doodling, that's no problem. You can just print out a picture and paste it into your bujo, or you can trace the figures. Once you're done drawing Archie and Betty, finish this spread by coloring them in using blue, yellow, and pink markers. Nothing is better than a milkshake at Pops, so I just had to include this pivotal place where Riverdale students go to talk gossip and drink delicious milkshakes. To get started, we're going to draw our calendar on the left-hand page. To do this, I started two boxes from the left and drew a calendar that was 21 boxes wide and 15 boxes tall, making each day of the month a three by three box. Next, I wrote the number of the day of the month small in the top left corner of each box. I then wrote October in big bubbly script letters. Our first Pops themed element we're going to create is the iconic pink milkshake. To do this, you're going to sketch out a large milkshake glass that spans the entire height of the page. I drew a strawberry on the side of the glass, whipped cream at the top, and a straw sticking out of the glass. Next, I colored in the glass, the strawberry, and the straw with a couple shades of pink. And boy, does this look delicious. If I could, I would rip it out of my bullet journal and drink it. But for obvious reasons, I can't do that. So we're gonna move on. The right-hand side of the page is an explosion of doodles. But as I said before, if you're not comfortable drawing doodles, you can always paste in an image or trace them. To begin, we're going to use the bottom of a cup to outline three medium-sized circles, which we are going to label goals, tasks, and events. Once this is done, the doodles begin. I started by drawing the Pops neon sign in the open space to the left of our goals bubble. Then, I drew a couple booths from the inside of the diner to the space at the right of the tasks bubble. To finish off the doodles, I drew the outside of the diner in the open space towards the left of the events bubble. Once you're done doodling, you can color them in with the same shades of pink you used on the page to the left. Looking at this finished spread, I could just leap into the pages and hang out with Betty and Veronica at Pop's Diner. It would be goals. Okay, let's be real. Who has time to sleep when they could be binge watching Riverdale? The answer is probably no one. But that doesn't mean sleep isn't important. And that's why I decided to include a sleep tracker this month. First, I began by writing the numbers one through 31, two boxes from the left of the page. I started with 31 and went up the page as I wrote out all the numbers. Next, I drew two thin vertical lines on either side of the numbers. Then, I drew two thin vertical lines, one box from the right of the page. Next, I drew two thin horizontal lines, six boxes from the top of the page. Below those horizontal lines, I wrote out the time of day starting with 3 p.m. and going until I reached 3 p.m. again. I then wrote p.m. on either side of the two horizontal lines. To finish off this page, I wrote sleep tracker at the top of the page and drew some clouds on either side. I colored them in using a blue marker. When you want to use this page, you're going to record your sleep by starting a line at where you fell asleep and ending the line where you woke up. Now, when Netflix asks you whether or not you're still watching, you'll close out instead of saying continue watching because you'll know when you've gone one too many days sleep deprived. You might not be joining the serpents just like Cheryl did, but that doesn't mean we don't want them in our journal. 
In fact, I've always been secretly obsessed with the Southside Serpents, so I jumped at the opportunity to include their unique logo in my bullet journal. So I decided it would be perfect to use it in this month's habit tracker. When we're done with this, even the Southside Serpents are gonna wanna use this page. The first thing we're going to do is draw five mini calendars, each being 14 by 10, with the numbers for the day of the week written in each box. I would definitely suggest sketching out the snake logo in pencil first, just to make sure that you get the right perspective. Once you're done, you can go back in with a black micron and outline your lines. I then colored in the snake using a green marker for the skin and a pink marker for the tongue and eye. Next, I wrote the word habit in the same font the Southside Serpent logo uses. And then I wrote the word tracker in tall skinny letters below. To finish off this spread, I wrote the names of the habits I want to track directly above each calendar. For the calendar towards the left of the page, you won't be able to fit the name of the habit at the top of the calendar, so instead, we're going to write it below. To use this spread, you're gonna use the same pink marker we used for the snake eye and tongue. Whenever you complete or practice a habit on a particular day, you're going to color in the box for the number of the day of the month that you completed that habit. Who would have thought that the Southside Serpents would be helping you complete your habits? I certainly didn't. When I knew I'd be including a quote page this month, it was nearly impossible for me to only pick one quote. I mean, Riverdale has so many witty lines, how can you only pick one? But I did decide to go with one by Cheryl Blossom, who is known for having some of the most over-the-top quotes. The quote I'm gonna be using today is one Cheryl used in the first season of Riverdale, when she says, some people say it's retro, I'd say it's eternal and iconic. The first thing I decided to do with this quote is highlight the words retro, eternal, and iconic, and did so by using a different font for those three words. I used a large cursive script font for those three words and used a simple, tall, skinny font for all of the other words in the quote. I really wanna keep this quote page simple, but I can't do a quote by Cheryl and not include her spider pen. We see her wearing it all the time. And I low-key want one for myself. I drew it in the open space towards the bottom left corner of the page. You can finish off this page by coloring it in with a purple or pink marker. And there you have it, a cute little quote page dedicated solely to Cheryl Blossom. Okay, moving on. To prevent severe Riverdale withdrawal in between seasons, which I'm sure we've all experienced at some point, I keep a running list of all the TV shows I wanna watch in between seasons. The first thing I did was write the title at the top of the page. I wrote television series in tall skinny letters, and then underneath that I wrote the word tracker in calligraphy. Then I drew the outline of a TV around my header. Even though, let's be honest, most of us are probably watching on the computer. Two boxes below that, I took my coral marker and drew lines that were 15 boxes long all the way down the entire page. Once my coral ink dried a bit, I wrote the names of the series that I want to track. Next to the series title, I wrote the number of seasons each show currently has out. To use this spread, once you finish watching an entire season of each show, you can color over the number with a green circle. Before I started tracking the shows I watched, I thought there was no better feeling than finishing a season. But finishing this page totally beats that. There are so many great memories from Riverdale, but the one that really sticks out in my brain is when Veronica and Archie sang together at homecoming. And that specific moment really inspired me to make a monthly memory page where I can write down all of the memories I make in that month. I started this spread by writing memory log across the top of both pages. Then above memory log, I created a box with a drop shadow where I wrote the name of the month. Next, I drew three hanging strings of varying lengths of Polaroid pictures. To create this, first draw all of the Polaroid pictures so that the black string doesn't show through. On each picture, make sure to hang them with a black clothespin so they don't look like they're randomly floating on the page. To finish the doodle, just draw a string holding up all of the Polaroids. The very last thing to do is draw a large box under memory log that stretches behind the hanging Polaroids. This is where you can either write out or doodle your memories of the month. For example, you can either write that you binge watch all three seasons of Riverdale, or you can even draw a fun little doodle from your favorite moment from the show. For my Riverdale themed weekly, I thought what better way to showcase all of the amazing characters in that show by giving each of them their own day. I mean, by now, Riverdale should definitely be a national holiday, right? I mean, in my mind, it totally is. For this spread, I began by drawing five tall rectangles starting from the left-hand side of the page with a space in between each box. In the empty space next to the fifth box, draw two boxes slightly smaller than the ones you just drew. Next, pick one color for each day of the week and write out the number of the day of the week. 
Above those numbers, write out the day of the week. In the bottom left corner, I created a mini calendar. I always find it really helpful to have mini calendars on my weekly spreads so that I have a big picture view of the month. Moving on, I created two sections for notes and reminders. I then added another two vertical lines to divide the two sections. To highlight this month's theme, I drew a character above each day. But remember, if you're not big into doodling, that's no problem at all. You can always just print off a picture and paste it in your bujo or trace them. And trust me, your page will still look beautiful. As a Riverdale super fan, I absolutely had a blast working on these spreads. And now I'm full on ready to go stock Archie and Betty IRL. This video was very highly requested from you guys. Before you go, I really wanna know what other fandom themed spreads you guys wanna see. And as always, make sure you subscribe to Seventeen's YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any future bullet journaling tips and tricks. See you next week.